Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Welcome once again to another Growing in Grace podcast. Last week we did kind of a, a different one celebrating 600 podcasts. And this one will be a bit different too because I, Joel Brzezinski, have world-renowned author with me, Michael <laughs> C. Kepler. And we're here to uh, sell as many of his books as we possibly can. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're, but we're here to talk. You know, Mike Kepler, uh, my podcast co-host here every week for the last 600 plus podcasts, we've talked about the grace of God. We've talked about the covenants. We've talked about this all the confusion that goes on with the covenants. Well, Cap has written a book called Clash of the Covenants, Escaping Religious Bondage Through the Grace Guarantee. And uh, Mike, this book, it, it's not even something that you really even had planned on doing, but we're here to talk a little bit about how it came about and what it's about. Joel, it started almost three years ago, which is hard for me to believe because I can remember telling you I started writing this thing and I felt like God wanted me to get this thing out there as fast as possible. And, uh, you know, it's uh, over two and a half years later that I finally have released it on Kindle. Now, if you don't have a Kindle, I'll just mention this real quick. And you can just type in Clash of the Covenants and you should be able to find it on Amazon. But if you don't have a Kindle and you don't plan on buying one, you can download the free Kindle app to your computer or your smartphone or your tablet and you'd be able to purchase the book and read it. I suspect at some point, Joel, maybe we'll, we'll get a paperback out there. But for now, that's what it's available as at the time of this recording. And you're right. I'm not a writer. You're more of a writer than I am, actually. And, and you've done a lot of, of blogging and different writings over the years. And that's really not something I've done. The lady who edited my book actually told me that I wasn't bad for somebody who wasn't a writer. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> and I'll not, say that. It, it, the I'll say the book is it is an easy read. It's something that flows. It's something that, uh, you know, it's got your unique humor in there. And you wouldn't be able to pick up the fact that this guy doesn't write much. It, it really does come across as as well written and 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 it flows really well, like I said. So anyway, just to put that plug in for, for you as a, as a new writer, so to speak. <laughs> well, thank you. I um I appreciate that, and and she gave me some encouragement too. But um, and she's she's been around for a long time editing books, and so a couple of times she she gave me a real pat on the back, and I can remember the line. But at one time she she said she put a little note over on the side and said, "Sometimes you can just make this sing." Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was when I, I talked about legalists who will try to uh, blot out the dots and fiddle with the tittles, um, or it, it was a bl blot out the jots and fiddle with the tittles. She, she thought that was a great line. But to get to the beginning of how this whole thing started, Joel, I was getting ready to, uh, one of the things that we've talked about over the years that always seemed to resonate, especially in the earlier years of our podcast, was the Sermon on the Mount and our perspective on that, and how Jesus wasn't just providing a new Christian teaching, but he was speaking to the Jews, and he was ministering the law, and he was really providing them with a message of, of hopelessness and despair. That was his purpose, whereas most people will read it through the lens of Jesus is teaching us something new to do. And so we've done these podcasts on the Sermon on the Mount, and I thought, and I think we were getting ready, or we were in the middle of doing a series several years ago on that, on our podcast. And so I started thinking to myself, this would be kind of neat to try and summarize what we've talked about on the podcast with the Sermon on the Mount by doing just some sort of a mini book. Just I just got the Word document out. I didn't know if it would be 10 or 20 pages, but I, I just started writing. And it was interesting because I started thinking to myself, you know, for people to understand what's being communicated here, it would really be helpful if I also provided some background in front of that about the law and how we're free from the law and we're dead to the law and, you know, kind of help people understand why Jesus was ministering this way to Israel. 
And it's interesting, Joel, I, I, I don't want to take too much time on this, but I received a Facebook message from an old radio friend of mine. She used to work as a, a copywriter and secretary many years ago, and we've stayed in touch. She went to the mission field, and I got a message from her mom, who's elderly now, but she uh, jumped on her daughter's Facebook because she didn't have one. And I think she saw where I had posted a podcast about the Sermon on the Mount. And she messaged me and said, is there any way you could put this in written form? And I said, well, it's interesting you ask that because I just started <laughs> writing what I think is going to be sort of a real short mini book on the Sermon on the Mount. Had a title for it and everything. But then it began to grow. What became 5,000 words became 15, became 25, became over 50,000 words. And I spent a couple of years starting to try to polish and refine it and move things around. It was quite a job. But as, as we were talking or as I was writing this stuff, I began to just, and so what this really is, you know what this book really is? It's, it's a growing in grace podcast <laughs> inside of a book. I mean, that's really what this is. Podcast Clash of the Covenant. And I think what occurred thereafter is that I started finding some things that I had never seen before. Some things that I had started connecting on that I'd never heard others talk very much about. On a couple of occasions, I can even rem remember talking to you about that. So some of what we were, we've been talking about over the last two to three years on our podcast were things that I was writing about. And some of what's in the book are things we've talked about for years. So that's kind of what you've got with the, the Growing in Grace podcast. But Joel, the, the book kind of breaks down into, into three sections. As you look at, a, in fact, I have them in the contents, the, the three different parts that the chapters are, are listed under. Part one is um, covenant confusion. A lot of that just kind of breaks down taking Bible verses out of context. What is the law and why do we as Christians not have any relation to it? The Ten Commandments, how do they play into this? Are, are, are they still to be applied to our lives, or did something better come along to replace them? That's kind of in the first part of the book. The second part, Covenant Collision, gets into the New Testament dividing line, the ministry of Jesus, why he ministered some of the things that he did, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord's Prayer, some of the parables we touch on, like the, uh, the rich young ruler, things that we've talked about again here on the podcast. The Good Samaritan, mm -hmm. the woman caught in the act. I mean, some of these stories that are looked at from a quite a, an entirely different perspective. And then there's the, the covenant conclusion is the, the last part of the book. So really, the, the crux of the book is designed to reach out to your average churchgoer. Is there some great grace candy here for, for the grace radicals who, who love our podcast? Absolutely. You'll eat a lot of this stuff up if you enjoyed what we talk about on the podcast. But it's really targeted at your average churchgoer who needs to be freed up from some of the bondage that, sadly, they've inherited from listening to a lot of church teaching over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, if somebody's listening, you like the podcast, you like what we talk about here, and maybe you can think of somebody that you know that you would just love them to hear this stuff. Maybe they're not the type of person who, well, maybe you could share the podcast with them, but here, what we've got here with Mike's book is that you can share in written form, like you were saying, it's the podcast, basically, in written form, something that will help people, like you say, to be free. I mean, that's one of the core things about this podcast anyway, is that we are trying to help people to be free. We're not just yapping our mouths, uh, trying to be contrary to what the church is saying, but we're really actually wanting to help church people, people who have been in the church all their lives, and, or for whatever amount of time, they can't seem to make sense of some of these things, like some of the things you talk about in the book, where Jesus said certain things in the Sermon on the Mount. People are trying to figure out, how does this fit into my Christian life? And in the book here, you'll find that Cap has done a really great job of showing how how those words were meant for a certain group of people, the Jews who were under the law, and how it, you know, it doesn't apply to us. Like you were saying, Cap, the first part, you're talking about the confusion that people have with all these, the two different covenants and and the law, the ministry of death and all these things, how the covenants then collide and people try to put these together and, and all these things. And so I think it'd be a great thing for somebody who really 
it could be very helpful for somebody who who has confusion over all these things. So you talked about how it came about, and and that's kind of, it's just kind of cool because to me anyway, it wasn't something that you were you didn't have this lifelong dream of writing a book. It, it's really kind of the opposite for me. I've had this twenty year dream of writing a book, and I just can't seem to get it out. It will come someday, I'm sure, but. That's the beauty of what God is doing. I, I think God has put this thing together, put this in your heart to do this. And you've typed away and you've edited and you've changed things and moved things around and you've made it into this this book that I think will be very helpful for people. And so what, I mean, you've kind of talked about this, but what do you hope people get out of this? Obviously, the, the stuff that we talk about here in the podcast, but are there specific things that you hope that people will see and understand when they read this? Well, it, it challenges a lot of traditional mindsets. And it's not meant to be just a, a, a book that's critical against church doctrine or any of that. In fact, I, I think somewhere at the beginning of the book, probably in the introduction, I, I, I make the statement that I'm not mentioning any ministries by name. I have no denominational banner to wave. My goal here is just to help people understand the unconditional love that God has for them and that Jesus, through his finished work, did it all on our behalf. And this empowers us now in grace to be able to live in a way that is supernatural because of the life of God that's now in us. So we want to take away the confusion of this mixture between the old covenant and the new because that, that mixture was never meant to take place, and it's very dominant in many Christian teachings. So we're trying to help separate that and help people come to a place of peace and, and realizing that the plenitude of Christ's finished work and the forgiveness that's already been provided. And so that's, in, in a nutshell, what the goal is here. And, and you know, I I'd said this before we came on, Joel, there, there, I kept thinking this was going to be out a couple of years ago, and then six months after that or six months after that, and it just kept getting put off. And I see now looking back on why that happened. But the bottom line here is I thought about not even putting it out. And then, you know, the Spirit of God was kind of on me not to do that because of the things that I have learned that have Mm -hmm. been a big blessing to me while writing this, some of the revelation that was coming to me. Some of it will sound familiar to our grace friends, and and some of it will be kind of different. I remember calling you up on the phone one day about one particular chapter, The Prodigal Son. I said, Joel, have you ever heard this before? And we ended up doing some podcasts on it. So there's just some really neat things in here that I, I hope people will find a blessing. Again, it's called Clash of the Covenants. Escaping Religious Bondage Through the Grace Guarantee, and uh, the author name that's on it is, the the way it's uh, written out on the book is Michael C. Kapler. Yep, and you can find that on Amazon. I'll also link to it on the podcast at growingingrace.org. So we hope that you'll be able to uh, get this book and be set free by the grace of God. Yeah, and, and be sure to share it. I mean, that that's a, the goal here is read the book, and you'll be motivated to, to have others read the book so that they can experience that as well. That's right. Yeah, share the book and let other people know about this. Well, coming up next week on Growing in Grace, we became righteous. But how did we do that? Something had to happen first to Jesus became sin. Talk about that next week right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezicki. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.